So we're going to get started talking about goal setting, and this is a topic that a lot of people have uh, a fair amount of experience with and re tell me that they use regularly with clients and that they do themselves. And everyone sort of adopts their own methods for this. And so we're going to talk about some of the more optimal methods for setting goals, both for yourself as a rider and competitor uh, in your in your business, and then also facilitating that process with clients, uh, junior riders, and perhaps their parents and families and supporters, and and then also looking at what are some good ways to solve some of the common goal setting challenges. And uh, hopefully, when we get to the question and answer period at the end, people will have uh, some questions for me and maybe a little troubleshooting or just some fine tuning. I don't see tonight so much as really the super duper bare bones uh, education on goal setting as much as I do a little bit of polishing and fine tuning and making this really uh, appropriate and specific to horse professionals. So we'll do a little bit of the basics, but um, we're going to think we're going to think more a little around how to personalize the information that you do come up with as far as your goals, how to use it in your day-to-day -day training and teaching. You know, when we think about goal setting, sometimes people think of it as being a lot of work and, uh, you know, a lot to sit down and have to write and they have to think really clearly and map out a whole year and do a lot of planning. And I don't, I don't want to... I don't want you to prevent yourself from receiving some of the benefits of goal setting by looking at it in a really sort of harsh, uh, black and white kind of way. So just to go over, to hopefully to motivate people a little bit, I mean, if you signed up for this webinar, you're interested in goal setting, so I'm not talking to probably an audience that, that finds it laborious necessarily, but the benefits hopefully motivate you. and. And one of those best benefits in in what I've seen in in the in the um, consulting that I do is how it can increase confidence. And why I say that is when you recognize that your effort and focus and persistence pays off, and you recognize specific signposts that you've set for yourself, and you accomplish them, there's really nothing better to build confidence. And and for this, it takes some forethought. It's not the kind of thing that has as great a payoff if you just look in the rearview mirror and say, oh, look, I was there and I was there and I was there and I, and I did these things. It's better and it's much more satisfying and rewarding and feels a lot different. You experience it very differently. If you set, set things ahead of time, look for things that you're hoping for, you know, look for things that are dream goals, you work them into long-term goals, break them down and down and down until they become things that you're using in your writing and teaching every day that you're at work. So the confidence piece to me is really, really big, and I think that's often overlooked um, by folks. And as well, hopefully, we, we, we see that it improves performance because it helps you ride and train uh, with with greater degree of focus, you're more targeted on things that you're aiming for. You have more an idea where you're going, and so that's often looked at. You know, goal setting is looked at that way. How do you how do you get places when you don't know where you're going, right? So that you need to sit down and sort of map that out for yourself. The also the other thing that that I emphasize when I work with clients is that you really in the goal setting process want to focus on your improvements and the progress that you're making. And even when things may not turn out as you expect, you might have a horse that ends up having to go in a different division or making different choices with a rider about what their competitive goals are that year. You you want to start you want to help um, the rider, you want to help yourself see progress and just focusing on improvements. A lot of times people look at it the opposite, like when they set goals, they're, they're really just looking at all the things they don't have yet. And I see it in quite the reverse. As long as you keep track and or have a way of recording your rides or looking at a week and looking at a training of a horse and seeing improvements in, in a concrete and specific way, you're able to focus on those improvements and feel good about the process and looking at goal setting as more of a fluid process than a like I said concrete 
kind of pass or fail kind of event. Uh, I think that's what puts a lot of people off. So those are some benefits you want, you know, looking at increasing confidence, increase, improving performance, um, focusing on improvements, and adopting this whole goal-setting idea as being fluid and not static. It's not like you write the goal, you put it in a drawer, and it's locked in for the rest of the year, and if you don't make it, you're upset. Uh, that's that's a very limiting way to look at this um, this process. So one of the things here we see first, as far as importance as a trainer, that you walk, you talk, that you're walking your talk, right? If you're doing goal setting meetings with clients, that you're actually setting goals for yourself as well, looking at what horses you have to compete that year, what things are realistic for you and for the horse, uh, what things are exciting to you, because also hopefully this that goal setting is going to build in a, a way to harness your motivation and direct it appropriately, and. I really think that this, and we'll talk about in this, I talk about a little bit in some other places, but modeling this for clients and modeling how disappointment is okay. You know, that, okay, yeah, we didn't make that goal. I'm disappointed. Here's what I learned, and let's take it and go forward and adjust our goals. So walking the talk and, and setting SMART goals. So SMART's an acronym that's used a lot in the sports psychology world and that refers to setting uh specific goals right so that you're you're saying you know i i want to if if it's a performance goal let's say so let's make a distinction here between outcome and performance right so a lot of times people just think of goals as outcome oriented that would be the result of competition um a performance goal is something that changes in your performance right so something that you're looking to improve so, you know, as a trainer, maybe a, a goal you would set, it, it might be something like, I want to have better focus on the days that I have to show and teach. I want to ride when I ride and teach when I teach and try and draw some boundaries. That could be a goal, right? So that's specific. It's measurable when you say, by, by this particular big show, maybe that's in six weeks, you know, so that, you know, XYZ show in six weeks, I'm going to have methods for directing my focus appropriately and making clear boundaries with my clients. So that's measurable because you have a time piece to it. Uh, the A, you'll see if you do, if you've done any reading in sports psychology, some people call it attainable uh, for A, and some people say adjustable. Uh, I'm a believer in the adjustable piece because that, I think, is, like I said, something that trips people up so much with goal setting. And so adjustable is just looking at every time you review your goals, you're, you're reassessing them. You're saying, are they realistic? Are they not? What can I do about it? How can I adjust and be more appropriate um, for that horse or for that student? The R, then, is realistic. So making sure that you're helping someone not, you know, say they are going from the – AA hunters to the AO hunters after, you know, a month of having a new horse or something that's maybe not the best example, but something that's very inappropriate. Actually, the the nice uh, story that um, was on the equestrian professional site today about the man who won a bunch of ribbons at the first show and then was wildly disappointed that he wasn't going to make it to the Grand Prix the next year. Um, that That's a good example of someone having an unrealistic goal. And without communication as a trainer, you don't necessarily know whether your clients are setting these unrealistic goals and is using these very inappropriate yardsticks um, and then beating up on themselves and, and, and losing confidence, in fact, because they're not meeting those goals. T is often for time-based, which we kind of look at with measurable. It's, you know, time-based being the amount of time it takes to reach the goal. The M that we talked about, so SMART, the M being measurable is something that you're looking at as, okay, this is something that I can tell whether or not it's happening and how would I measure it. So in riding, this is something that's a little bit more tough. It's not a sport where you're going to measure times or things that are hard and objective like that, but um, but definitely having things that you can look at and reflect on in specific ways, that's really the key. 